I need a ring roller for a job, and rather than going out and buying one, I thought I'd have a go at making one. I started out with some 50 by 50 by 3 steel box section to make some legs. The idea is there'll be four legs and some pillow block bearings on the top with a small bottle jack, this one's three ton, in between. There'll be a little axle that goes between the pillow block bearings and a sort of frame that sits on the jack and goes up and down. The workpiece will go on some rollers on the frame and moving it up and down will adjust the curvature of the workpiece. The first thing we need to do is make some little plates with some studs in so that I can attach the pillow blocks to the top of the box section. I've got some 5mm steel plate which I'm drilling 12mm and then I can put some 12mm bolts through the plates and I'll weld them on. To keep them straight while I'm welding them I've just put a washer and a nut on, do that up and that keeps it all square. Now finally, after harking on about it, I've gone and got myself a 180 amp MIG welder. Um, Artec Welding have very kindly given me this, and uh, let's give it a go. It's uh, a lot faster than the TIG welder, that's for sure. That's going to go on there like that. A couple of tacks, one in each corner. For the base, I've cut some half inch steel plate and I'm just using magnetic welding clamps to hold the first leg square while I get that tacked in place and then I can build off of that first leg using bits of box section and clamps just to square everything up and get it all lined up. And that's the fourth leg going on now. So this is roughly how it's going to work. I've got some pieces of angle here. I'm going to weld a plate onto the outside to, to stiffen this top edge and then put some cutouts in it for the rollers to sit in. So some 6mm steel plate here. That's going to go on and it's just going to strengthen the edge to give a bit more area to support the ends of the rods. The pink marking is there so that I don't weld in those areas. And that way when I cut through for the ends of the roller rods, I'm not having to cut through a weld. I put the two pieces back to back and put two tacks on each end just to hold them together while I have them in the milling machine and cut out the slots for the roller supports. I could then just give them a quick tap with a chisel and break the tacks and the two pieces come apart. Doing it this way just makes sure that the cutouts on both the pieces stay lined up. And then flip it over and that's the two sides of the, the frame that's going to go up and down. And then some 6mm plate or roughly quarter inch just welded on the ends. I used a bit of 16mm round and a square just to check that everything was nicely lined up before I started adding some structure to it to really stiffen it up. This piece of box section is going to go through the uprights and keep it all lined up. And then some additional bracing, some triangular gussets to help reduce the bending stress from the two outer rollers. And this is what it looks like. Now there's a little bit of excess movement here so I want to add some extra box section in here to just try and reduce that, that play. So I've cut a piece and profiled the end so it fits against the side of the, the frame and a little bit of 3mm plate which will just get welded onto the end to box it in. And then the magnetic clamps just hold it in place while I get some tacks on. On the bottom, I wanted to add some additional stiffening 
and I've used a bit of 10 millimeter plate and cut some grooves into it and this will help spread the load of the jack into the frame. I could then bend the edges over along that cut line and weld that all in place. I found this C-spanner nut and I want to use it to make a locating ring for the top of the jack but the hole's a little bit too small so I put it in the lathe and went through it with the boring bar just to open the hole up slightly and now it's a nice fit on the jack so that can just be welded onto the bottom of the frame. I've got these pieces of box section and angle to make some extra structure for the bottom of the ring roller. I'm going to put some holes in it, slotted holes, so that I can bolt it down to the welding table when I'm using it. I'm using a 12mm drill and then a 12mm end mill to slot the holes so that I've got a little bit of clearance and wiggle room if it doesn't all come out square once it's welded or if the holes aren't quite where I thought they were on the table. So I've bolted that down, got it all squared up, put the main frame on top and then I can weld that all up together. I have to say I'm really happy with the MIG welder. I haven't used one for a few years but it's not taken too long to get back in the saddle. So to prevent the jack from sliding out while it's under load, I've got some 8mm square rod and I'm just cutting it most of the way through so that I can bend it over and then weld it on as a sort of perimeter fence around the base of the jack and then if it does start to move it's got, it's got something to stop it from sliding out. And that's it all welded on and then the jack just sits inside like that. Time for a bit of... Uh, new workshop grey yes this is the the new variety and the traditional workshop blue here going on in liberal quantities and once the paint's dry it doesn't fit well that is unfortunate it turns out that it's uh, a little bit snug so i've got some machinist jacks and i've ground some of the paint off spread it apart with the machinist jacks and then i'll get this plate welded on and then take the jacks out afterwards and then the plate should maintain the gap. That's much better. I've got clearance all the way up and down. Unfortunately I think I've actually gone a little bit too far and I've got a little bit of play now. Anyway, that's enough cut and stick. Let's get on with some of the machined parts. This is a bit of EN8 for the two outer roller axles. And I'm using the collet chuck because I'm going to machine the same feature onto both ends. And I want the two ends to stay concentric. So there's the first axle. I've made two of these. And that fits in any of the slots. So there's two of those, one for each side. For the roller, I'm using some 38mm mild steel. And I'm centre drilling it and then drilling it to just over 20 millimeters so it's got clearance on the axle and then I've machined up a small boring bar because my carbide tooling is is too big for this and I'm just taking a small cut out of either end so that I've got clearance for a bushing Uh, just a test fit there, it's just starting to grab so it should press in nicely. And putting it in using the fly press, and that's the first one, and then flip it over and put one in the opposite end. And because I've used the collet chuck, everything should be nice and concentric and in line. So hopefully, when we put the axle in, it should run nicely on the bushings. So here's the axle that we've made. That goes in there and then the whole thing sits in the frame. And you can just see the other one at the other end. There's a bit of 25mm EN8 there and I need to machine some flats on that and that's going to be the axle for the top for the main drive. So the flat at the end will be for the hand wheel to engage onto 
and then there'll be two more flats uh, which are for some grub screws for the main drive roller or the main drive die. Now I haven't got any broaching tools so I'm using grub screws and flats rather than cutting a keyway because I can't broach the keyway into the die. So there's the axle with our three flats on it. That's the one for the the, the hand wheel and then the two for uh, a roller that's going to go in the centre. Now making the roller for the centre, I made a bit of a mistake here. I'm drilling the two holes for the grub screws to lock it onto the shaft and I should have done this a bit later in the process as you'll see shortly where I've, I've made a bit of an error. Thankfully I got away with it but I learnt a lesson. So in the lathe now, drilling the centre hole and taking a clean up cut down the outside to just knock a, about 0.1mm off so that it's the correct diameter for putting a knurled finish on. Knurling is very sensitive to the diameter of the part if you if you want to get the correct repeating pattern and you don't end up with a so you don't end up with a double knurl or a, a knurl that sort of cuts over itself. This is just to give the roller some extra uh, traction on the part as it's pulling it through the machine. So here you can see the the drill bit is wobbling like crazy and that's because it's hitting that cross drilled hole. What I should have done is drilled after I'd done this process. Thankfully I went up a drill size and it, it went through and, and sorted itself out. And just part that off uh, to finish length and then I could hand tap the holes for the grub screws. And they're going to be what lock it onto the shaft. So there's our roller. I've got two M6 screws here. I thought I had some M6 uh, grub screws, but unfortunately I couldn't find any, so I'll have to swap these out once I've got some. Then I just parted off another piece of the 38mm round, which is going to be the hub for the handle. And then I could drill two holes and I had my uh, feeling lucky trousers on, so I thought we'd have a go at power tapping the threaded holes for the grub screws in this one. Thankfully got away with it, it's always a bit touch and go. That just fits on there like that, and then there'll be another two grub screws going there. And what we need is three spokes, which are going to be for the handle. To make those, I don't have a tube notcher so I used a hole saw in the milling machine to put some bird mouths on the ends of the spokes and of course the last one thankfully not the first one it grabbed the hole saw ripped all the teeth off and made a bit of a mess so there's our three spokes on our hub and I'm just going to use the TIG welder here rather than the MIG as it's a little bit more accurate and this is more what I would consider to be detail work Now what I really need is a ring roller to make the ring. Thankfully, here it is, so let's give it a go. So this is rolling up a bit of tube for the wheel that's going to go on the ends of the three spokes. Um, ideally I'd use a die with a cutout in it that matches the diameter of the tube. Uh, I've ordered some material to make some dies for tube rolling. Unfortunately it didn't turn up in time so I'm having to use the, the dies that I've made for rolling flat stock. So it has put a small flat surface on the inside of the, the circle but it's I think it's quite acceptable. Now to get it out you just have to undo the two screws and then lower the, the frame with the two outer rollers on it and then pull the axle out and then the the central die or the central drive roller pops out and you can take out your piece if you've rolled a full circle and then that can just go back in. Now I've ever so slightly over bent this so I'll cut it off here get rid of the flat ends and then put the two ends together at the spoke and then get that TIG welder together. There's a small flat spot just there but 
I think it'll be all right. It's good enough for a first attempt anyway. Once I get used to the ring roller and things, I expect I'll be able to do slightly better. I'll just use the TIG to put the hand wheel together. And here it is, all painted up. And there's a bit of a close-up of the, the business end. So let's give it a go, shall we? This is some 100 millimeter wide or four inch wide by three millimeter thick. It's about an eighth of an inch. And this is about the size material that I actually built it for. And that's no problem at all. That's, that's gone through really nicely. And I think it, it wouldn't have any trouble rolling that up into a full ring if I wanted to. And we've got some six millimeter thick aluminium here, about a quarter of an inch. And that's rolling up into a, a full circle, no problem at all. Nice and easy. You can see that little bit of play in the, in the frame as it rocks back and forwards. Um, I'll see how it goes. If I need to shim it for any reason, then I will. And let's give it a challenge. This is some 50 millimeter wide by 25 millimeter high by three millimeter thick. That's two inch by one inch by about an eighth. And I think that's about the max that it'll manage. I hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully I'll see you next time. If you're new here, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give the video a share. Thanks for watching.